Engineering Services. Elite is a PTC partner, so that means that we are a reseller and also a service provider for all of the different products. Obviously, today we'll be talking about Creo and some of the functionality involved with that, uh, and that's one thing that Elite can help you with. But we also do services for augmented reality, for PLM, uh, and the various products that PTC has. Uh, on top of that, we also do consulting, industrialization, and we can help with various engineering projects. So Elite Engineering Services actually has several branches. Uh, we are part of the Elite Aerospace Group, which focuses in aerospace and suborbital launch and launch technology. Uh, we have a design group that does engineering design work. So as well as being a PTC partner, we are actually a PTC customer using their products as well, using Creo and Windchill and ThingWorks as ourselves. So we have a, a level of expertise that uh, is somewhat unique in the field. So if anyone has any questions about Elite, obviously you're welcome to contact me. I'd be happy to, to tell you more. Uh, but at this point, I will pass the presentation over to Rich and Lee, who will uh, work for Samerix, that are going to be giving us an intro into Creo flow analysis. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, Stuart, can you see my slide before we get started? I can see your slide and I hear you perfectly clearly. You're good to go. Okay. Well, thank you, Stuart, and also to uh, Bill Zanke and uh, the entire Elite Aerospace Group who are sponsoring this uh, webinar on a deep, deep dive on Creo flow analysis. And my name is Rich Moore and I'm responsible for strategy OEMs, which PTC is, and our other partners. And I'm here with Lei Shi, who is our lead developer on Creo Flow Analysis. Hello, everyone. We're going to take you through a pretty rapid agenda here today on uh, talking about the CFD market and how come uh, CAD users and how come Creo parametric, parametric CAD users haven't used CFD and how have we been able to make it usable, and how do we work with Elite and with PTC, and we'll explain Creo Flow, and uh, we'll uh, do a little usability setup right before we go to the demo. And we have uh, one case we would like to take the whole group through, and if we have time, we'll go through a second case as well. So uh, let me just get started here. So we're uh, based, headquartered in Bellevue, Washington, just outside of Seattle, and we are the developers of an award-winning CFD analyst platform called Samerix MP, and that platform has been in the market for 12 years now. And on top of that platform, we built uh, Pump Links, and that's the leading analyst CFD product for pumps, valves, and compressors. We also built Orca 3D Marine CFD, and that is used by Naval Architects to do CFD. And we have spent the last two years developing Creo Flow analysis by taking the analyst CFD platform, Samerix MP, and embedding that into Creo Parametric. And we also have a high end optimization partner called Casis, and that product is Casis Samerix MP. We also have a large office in Detroit in uh, Novi, uh, in Stuttgart, Germany, and Bangalore, India. We've had uh, tremendous growth since 2010. And uh, as I mentioned, we've been de developing high-end CFD physics for 11, 12 years now with many technical advantages that are now available to Creo users. So this is just a partial list of some of our uh, automotive and industrial customers. And this is a partial list of some of our aerospace and defense uh, and other industrial uh, customers here on this slide. This is uh, our Pump Links product built on Samerix MP. Uh, pumps, valves, and compressors, really complicated, positive displacement pumps, and dynamic valves, and screw and scroll compressors. 
This is an example of the marine application. If I could draw your attention to the upper right-hand corner where you see the boat porpoising through the water. You know, what came first, the chicken or the egg, or as I like to say, what came first, the water or the boat? Well, listen, naval architects have been designing digital boats for 30 years without the digital water or digital air, and now using the, the Sumerix MP platform, they're able to do that. And once they have the boat porpoising in the water, they can add the complexity of the uh, pro propellers, as you see here in the left, and the water jet, and also uh, cavitation. We've become the leader, uh, world's leader in uh, cavitation simulation. This is uh, some examples of uh, multi-phase that might draw your attention to the four-second flush in the middle, kind of uh, funny but very complicated. Uh, to be honest with you, and uh, also some particle capabilities. Uh, automotive sector, we've uh, had much success in uh, automotive and aerospace, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, external aerodynamics from, you know, the outside of a motorcycle to a car and uh, the Space Needle, Seattle Space Needle. So, so far, this is just a little bit on who Sumerix Incorporated are, who we are, what we've been up to, and now I want to move to, to you, to the PTC customers and the uh, PTC users. So there's been a large void in the CFD marketplace. This uh, market persona uh, illustrates 5 million engineers. If you count every analyst, engineer, and designer in the world, there are 5 million of you. And the funny thing about this market is there's high-end meaning high-end CFD physics on the right-hand side and very expensive software on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, you have very low-end CFD physics, but very few users. So um, what I would say to you is the low-end CFD physics that's been embedded into other CAD systems on the left, the physics isn't strong enough to move to the middle or to the right and the stuff on the right is too hard to use and too expensive and hasn't moved to the left. So this is the big void in CFD. And the way I like to describe it is what if an analyst CFD could meet parametric CAD? Or what if a Creo parametric end user could use analyst CFD functionality in a way that they could be successful and had uh, strong usability? So this is the reason for our strategic partnership with PTC and uh, Sumerix. One of the interesting things about this market is that the CFD analysts are not parametric CAD users. So think about how this breaks the workflow. You design the parametric CAD model in Creo Parametric, and then you hand it over to an analyst. And then if you change the model, then that analyst has, that poor analyst has to update everything. So we're going to show you how we've associated that into one uh, single workflow. So that's kind of a business view of the CFD marketplace and what has been happening. This is the same 5 million users. We believe that all 5 million of these uh, engineers have either a fluids or heat problem each and every day as they design. Uh, their uh, products, but let's take a technical view of the same uh, void in the marketplace. And so there are some significant things that PTC and Sumerix had to solve to make this available uh, to you and your colleagues. The first thing we had to do was embed our Sumerix MP analyst CFD platform into Creo, and we did that using the Creo parametric API and UIs. And that now, for the first time, and one model allows you to leverage the geometry, which is significant for lots of problems that we'll talk about, but also to levy, leverage the parameters. We also wrote a automatic algorithm that automatically extracts the fluids volume model from any Creo par parametric model, internal or external. And a fluids volume model is the starting point 
for every CFD simulation. So think about it this way. Probably everybody on this call is pretty darn good at using Creo Parametric, and you can pretty much model everything today. This gives you the opp opportunity to model things like air, water, temperature, and pressure. I like to call it the unseeable, things that you can't see in your assembly, inside your assembly or outside of your assembly. It also creates a secondary workflow. I predict in the next five to 10 years, there will be as many parametric CAD users using parametric CAD to create fluids volume models as they do product definition. And this is the glue between the physical and digital convergence using IoT. So the, the, the compelling value proposition for all of you, and this is significant, is you can, in Creo Parametric and Creo Flow Analysis, create both the uh, design and uh, the fluids, and those two associate to one another, and you can also connect that up to uh, IoT. This, this is a way to significantly improve your designs. This is a way to drastically reduce the number of physical prototypes that you build. This is a way to share the unseeable by displaying streamlines and animation from the uh, fluids and heat that you design. And the, so there's, there's sort of three concepts here. Think of digital modeling, digital fluids, and physical connectivity. So you associate the parametric CAD model with the fluids, and both of those are now associated with the physical product. So once your product is deployed and out in the field, the things that you can't see, like fluids, for sure air, sometimes water if it's uh, obviously internal, temperature and pressure, you can now monitor those in real time. You can compare those to the physics and the streamlines and the animation that you calculated in Creo flow analysis. And of course, that's always associated to the latest design within Creo parametric. So a little bit on the PTC Samaric's responsibilities and partnership and also the elite aerospace group role in this partnership. So we're uh, you know, uh, very much a development and support company, and we were selected because of our technical uh, advantages by PTC. And we have released this product with Creo 4.0 M40 and Creo 5.0. It's already been, uh, Creo 4.0 M50 has already been released, and Creo 5.0 M10 is about to be released. And we'll just keep adding uh, more and more uh, releases and more and more uh, enhancements to those products. What you get is analyst CFD functionality uh, in a usable way embedded into Creo. You get the glue for the digital and physical convergence. What we do is we do the development work. Lay and his team here in Bellevue with uh, a team at PTC in uh, Boston, Needham, and then a, another group in India and Israel, and then another group in the Ukraine and in China have worked on this product around the clock. Uh, as I said, for over a year now, almost two years, to bring this to market. What Elite Aerospace Group and PTC, what their job is, is exactly what we're doing right now, is a webinar where we can do a deep dive on Creo flow analysis so that you can know about it and so that you can work with Elite Aerospace Group to uh, buy that software, to implement our software, and uh, to be the first line of support. Okay. So one of the things I really like to do is give a shout out to PTC product management. So, you know, we worked with, you know, the top uh, team there, Brian Thompson, Paul Sager, Mark Fisher, Jose Coronado, to put this uh, agreement together and this solution together. And one of the, I had two goals uh, for that team. I said this has to be usable in terms of the way we package it, and it has to be affordable. Uh, because that's been the other big bottleneck in CFD. So they did a great job, came up with three Creo flow analysis packages. I'll walk you through this uh, pretty quickly. So the base package, uh, first of all, comes with flow and heat, because as I said earlier, we think all of you have that. One of those two problems are most likely the combination of those two problems. You can calculate internal or external 
uh, flows. You can paint and animate both streamlines and uh, the convergence of, of our equations and formulas in real time. You can uh, also uh, include the turbulence uh, model in your solution. So that's the base package. Then to go over to PLUS, there's two significant things that we add. Radiation, so if you have some heat where your customers have to touch or get close to something that's hot, you're definitely going to need that module, right? And the other one is a moving and sliding mesh. If you have water or air that rotates or pushes your solids, then this becomes a requirement. And then the premium package is typically added if you have either a cavitation, the bubbles that I showed earlier, the multi-phase, uh, not limited to marine, but all different types of multi-phase problems and multi-components where you uh, have uh, a mixture of gases, let's say nitrogen and oxygen, and then uh, dynamics where you have the fluids that actually move the, uh, the solid. So those are the three packages, and um, Stuart and Bill can follow up with you on pricing, but the idea is, you know, affordable, you know, a little bit more uh, capability based on the physics and then a little bit more capability based on the physics. Okay. These are uh, fluid volume models that have been extracted from Creo Parametric. So you can use the parameters of this fluid volume model to do what-if studies, and then when you change the parametric CAD model, the fluid volume model automatically updates for you. And this has been the missing piece in uh, the workflow as well. So I would just say to you, the last 10 years, you know, we've been focused on the analyst market with a new CFD software architecture that has configurable templates. So when you set up a project, you can save that as a template, and then you can just update the geometry and all of your settings will uh, take over for you, and Lay will show that in the demo. We have a very automatic and efficient measure that creates fewer cells than anyone else in the marketplace with fewer iterations in the solver, because those two are uh, tied together closely, but we get as accurate or more accurate of an answer of any of our competitors because of our superior uh, physics. So we have world-class customers, as I shared with you earlier, but we're gonna add more and more and more physics for the analysts, because that's our core and that makes us strong, and then as we add to that core and it becomes automated and it becomes robust, then we add it to Creo Flow Analysis and Orca 3D Marine CFD and a few other partner products that we have. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring analyst CFD functionality to the broader market. Okay? So what do you get? You get this low-hanging fruit of a collapsed workflow, a faster cycle from going from parametric CAD to a CFD analysis, you get the ability to do fluid volume modeling, which is connected not only to the Creo parametric model, but to the studio, ThingWorks studio model. And I think thousands and thousands of Creo users will adopt this. They already are. Since we released this product in January, on a global basis, the sales have been uh, high. In fact, people within the PTC community are saying they haven't seen anything like this since the Pro-E days, so it's really been exciting. PTC has become a leading CFD, uh, CFD solution overnight. They plan to add $150 million of subscription revenue over the short term and uh, for the long term uh, improve on that growth curve. It fills the void in the CFD marketplace, counters and beats Siemens, SolidWorks, ANSYS, um, and, and the CAD competitors. And for the Creo Parametric users, this builds an unbelievable moat around Creo Parametric because there isn't anybody in the market to date who has been able to pull off what we have been able to do. And what we get is world-class marketing, sales, and support through Elite Aerospace Group and other PTC resellers. All right. Before we go into the demo, I want to transition a little bit on usability because this is the key note for how you will be successful with Creo flow analysis. So uh, there are uh, basically six steps and Lay will go through that and the seventh step is that, uh, the way that you can make changes both to Creo parametric and both to Creo flow analysis. So using the parameters and uh, the fluids volume model. Now here are the physics, the equations and formulas behind our 
uh, modules. And we do some really cool and interesting things by, for example, wrapping these equations and formulas around a k-epsilon turbulence model here that gives us some advantages and makes it simple for you as an end user. Now, the license manager will give you the right physics module, but I just wanted to show you a little uh, preview, uh, a little uh, view of our uh, formal formulas and equations. So, all right. So the first thing that you have to do is design it, decide if you're going to do an internal or external CFD solution, or the combination of the two, or what we call CHT, conjugate heat transfer uh, problem that has sort of all three of those. So you can see here the ability to select the internal fluids volume of a, a cryoparametric model or the external of a cryoparametric, or use the cryoparametric solid, use the external, and use the internal, all, all three of those. I mentioned uh, one of the advantages that we have is our automatic mesher, and it can handle complicated geometry, and we give a low cell count, and you can do easy and uh, local refinements, highly accurate, and it converges very quickly. But I want to teach you how we do that. So we use a binary split method. So we give you a coarse mesh automatically, then it goes to fine, finer, and finest around sharp edges, and curvy geometry. And the mesher does all that for you. And the way that it does that is it splits the cells into uh, binary splits, okay? And then those binary on off, or you know, it's actually number zero, one, two, three, four, those binary uh, are co uh, splits are connected to those equations and formulas that I saw showed you for, f for fast iteration or fewer iterations and a really accurate result. This underhood automotive example is a benchmark that we did specifically against Ansys and Star. By the way, those are the two companies that we compete with in the analyst marketplace. We typically beat them eight out of ten times. We beat them on this benchmark we did uh, from setup to meshing to solving in seven days. Um, Ansys and Star took at least 11 weeks to do the same problem. And you'll see in our demo, and you'll see when you become a customer, how fast the mesher is and how fast the solver is, giving accurate or more accurate answers than anybody on the marketplace, okay? So once you have your uh, mesh, then you select your volume conditions. What are the fluid properties, density, viscosity? What are the heat uh, properties, density, heat conductivity, capacity, heat sources, et cetera? Do you have anything that rotates, a rotating domain, not an inertial frame, or do you have uh, something that needs to move where you need to remesh that automatically and have our mesher connect all that up for you so you don't have to worry about it? And then you get to leverage cryoparametric to set up the boundary conditions. You know, where is the inlet, where the outlet, what are the wall conditions, the boundary conditions, borders, and so forth and uh, you can do that. And then you start your initial condition, what's the solution at the start of the simulation? Then you're ready to run, and so the question is, is it a solution unchanged with time, steady state, or is it transient, time-dependent solution? We give you the ability to monitor the solver in real time, and the way that we do that is our residual measures how close those equations are that I showed you earlier are satisfied by the boundary and volume conditions that you've selected, and we give you a curve, and you can watch the curve uh, converge, and it's a relative residual, and when uh, those curves drop, that means the solution has uh, converged. You also can monitor sort of your IP, you know, what flow rate, what pressure, what temperature, what viscous forces uh, you want to monitor, and Lay will show you that. And then once all this reaches, reaches a steady value and a periodic cycle, then we consider the solution converged, okay? We do a lot of things in real time. The uh, residual convergence plot, your own XY plots, and streamlines. But there are other things that you can post-process, vector plots, color map, ISO surface, section view, and particle tracking. I'll show you some examples of those. This is the overall UI and ribbon of Creo Flow analysis uh, organized logically left to right to help you with the uh, usability and workflow. 
But the real power of Creo flow analysis and the reason that we were able to take thousands and thousands of properties that CFD analysts use today is we place those properties in this panel on the left-hand side of the screen, but they, they are dynamic based on your selection up above. And Lay will show that to you. So if you're in a fluid domain or a solid domain or a heat domain, then you make a selection. And based on the physics modules that you've selected, you'll get certain properties below. And you won't get all 1,000 or multiple uh, properties. You just get the ones that apply to your uh, problem. Okay? And then this is some of the, uh, uh, well, of course, streamline and animation in real time. Uh, but here are some of the other post-processing uh, capabilities of Creo flow analysis, the vector post-processing isosurfaces. Again, there's the uh, good old four-second flush. And uh, a section view, Lay will show some section views in his demo, and color map, and so on. Okay, so let me just stop there and um, turn it, officially turn it over to uh, Lay Shi, and uh, he will walk you through uh, one case and uh, time dependent, maybe we'll do a second case. Thank you, Rich. So let me share my screen. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I will take this chance to show how to so, uh, conjugate heat transfer problem using QFlow flow analysis. So I just open a QO parametric assembly. As you can see, this is a power inverter. It has a lot of small electronics inside, so some components getting pretty hot. So we will have a cooling flow going through these openings, cool down some components inside, and get out from this opening. Here, the crew flow analysis is a fully embedded product. It's one application of crew parametrics. Let me open it first. And as you can see, we have a separate ribbons here, a property panel here, and a simulation trick here. Let me create a new project. We just create a new simulation project, and we have a separate tree to help you manage the simulation project. So as you can see, our comments are ordered from the left to the right. You can follow the theme, theme order to set up your case. First step for the CFD simulation is to create this question. That's why we develop a two uh, algorithm to help users automatically use the fluid domain. Using these two um, users just need to select the surfaces with openings. As you can see for this model, we have this surface. This is the surface with outlet. And we have this surface. This is the surface with inlet. So in this dialog, so let me select this surface and this surface. So these two surfaces define the fluid domain. So here, let me just uh, confirm the selection and click this button. So as you can see, we can we just automatically extract the fluid domain inside, and we also add that fluid part as a normal component in this assembly. So let me just open this component. So this is just a normal component. So our algorithm based on the inner loop of the selections we made in that dialog, we use the surface connectivity information and go inside to find all the internal surfaces and combine it into one solid body. So if you like, let me create a section view to look inside. So this is a negative part of the cat geometry. OK, so let me close it here and get back to the emission project. The next step is to select what kind of model we want to run the simulation. So we have the fluid part as the fluid simulation domain. So let me add all the solid parts from the assembly as the solid simulation domain because we want to solve a conjugate heat transfer problem. So we solve heat transfer equations in, in both fluid and solid. Let me confirm the selection here. 
So after I select it, as you can see, in this simulation domain group, we just add all the components in this group. The next step is to select the physics module. In this dialog, based on your license, uh, on this left list, we show the available physics you can use for the simulations. As you can see, we support multi-phase flow, turbulence flow for sure, and also we have a cavitation module. And for the mixing problems, we have multi-component modules, physics modules to help you solve that kind of simulation. And we support heat equation, uh, heat transfer problems. Also, if your uh, if some of the components are pretty uh, temperature are pretty high, we have radiation to consider the radiation heat transfer. Also, if you have a moving part, we have dynamic modules. Uh, we, we can solve one dot for translation and rotation. So for this simulation, let me just add turbulence flow. We consider turbulence flow inside heat modules and the streamline. So that's it. Next step, we want to make sure all the materials are correct for the solid and fluid part. So in this material selection dialog, as you can see, we use air for the fluid part, and we use the material settings from the assembly as the solid part. If you like, you can just change materials very quick using this combo box. I just uh, use the default settings of the materials. Looks good. And as you can see, when you, in this project tree, if you select something, we show the corresponding property in this property panel. Then you can, very, if you want to change something, you can change it very quick. Uh, next step, let me set up the volume condition. So we have this chip. Let's assume this chip generates some heat. Let me turn on the total heat source on this chip and I use phi 1 as the total heat source value here. And for the, that's all for the volume condition setting. Uh, one more thing is that because we, we are, we want to cool down this component, that let me create the output uh, for this component. Let me monitor the temperature for this component. So we, as you can see, we have an output uh, parameter for each component. So in this list, uh, if you are interested in some variables, you can turn it on and we can monitor that variables from the simulation. So let me turn on the temperature and also the minimum maximum temperature on this part. That's all for the volume condition settings. Uh, let's go to the boundary condition settings. Here is our inlet. By default, the boundary condition type is wall, so let me change to pressure inlet and use the ambient pressure here. And also let me release streamlines from these surfaces, and we can look inside of the flow field through, through the streamlines. streamlines. And here, this boundary condition underscore two is all that. So let me use volumetric flux here and then change the flow direction to all flow and use zero point zero zero one here. That's all. Then we can just uh, uh, generate a mesh. As Liz mentioned, uh, so our measure is fully automatic measure. We user don't need to do any splitting or uh, settings manually. Our measure can automatically resolve uh, some critical physics uh, geometry features, like sharp edge, curved surfaces, and the way you binary tree. So that's why we can refund the mesh in each direction independently also uh, we will automatically refund the mesh near the geometry. So that part will take care of your boundary uh, um, layer. So as you can see, we just finished the splitting part, and we are trying to create the mesh for this project. All right, we already got the mesh. Let me turn off the original CAD geometry, and uh, we can take a quick look of the mesh the results section.
So we are looking at the surface mesh here. So as you can see, we resolve all the curved surfaces automatically. Also, we keep the sharp edge. That looks good. So let me turn off the grid. Then we can just create a extra plot to monitor this component, the time feature on this component. Then we can run the simulation from here. So this is the time feature on that component. Here is the residual we can use to monitor the simulation progress. Let me show the other internal surfaces, and then we can plot the temperature distribution on these surfaces. As you can see, this part gets pretty hot, and uh, due to cooling flow, it's cool down this component, and we can keep drawing off these surfaces, and we can move to the streamlines. Let me have the original. So here is the streamlines inside. So we can also color this streamlines using any variables from this list. <coughs> so we, we just color it with velocity magnitude. Oh, we just finished the simulation. And you can see how efficient of our power. And uh, this, we just color the streamlines with velocity magnitude. And we can make the animation by setting up this animation time set. Let me just use zero point one here. So this is the animation of the streamlines inside. So for the other post processing tools, with the post section view as a surface, monitor points. So let me create a section view here. So you can use this light bar to control the position of your section. Or you can change it to different directions. Also, let me color the let me choose the velocity magnitude on these surfaces, and we can also plot a vector field on the section. Here is the velocity <coughs> vector on this section. And for the other surface, let me just create one other surface. Then we can just create some surfaces with the same values. Here, let me use, use like a temperature here. Then you can use this, this other surface to find out which areas are pretty hot inside of this box. And then you can also color this other surface with any variables from this list. Let me choose pressure here. So we just create other surface of temperature at 318K, and we color it with pressure distribution on this surface. All right. Because our simulation is so fast, so let me redo it from the beginning. You can see how our product can show the results in the real time when we solve it. So very useful. So we just plot the results in the real time, and we solve all these equations. And here is the uh, time feature on that component, on this component. So it converts very fast. So I will stop here for the first case. Do you guys have any questions? If you uh, have any questions, you can just put them into the chat window. Uh, if it's easier to explain, I can also unmute you. Uh, so please just go ahead and let me know if you have any questions so we can address those now. And as we wait for those, we'll go to a second case, demo case, just to show you the breadth of Creo flow analysis. Okay, let me close this assembly and uh, let me
Let's go to the second example. Uh, the second case I want to show is uh, like a water pump. As you can see, this is a water actor pump. It has two components inside. One is the stator, the other is the rotor. So let me open QFlow Analysis again and create a new project. So in this case, I will demo uh, moving sliding mesh and a non issue frame. How to use QFlow Analysis to solve a safety problem with some moving component. Uh, so first step of same thing, let me create a flow, fluid path for this simulation. Yeah, the first task is trying to do is to grab all the components inside to take some time. All right, got it. So we just, uh, as you can see, our tools automatically like these two surfaces with opening. So that's good. So let me just create a fluid domain based on that selection. How easy you can use our tools to create fluid domain. If you do it manually, it's quite involved. Maybe you need to spend hours or days on, the, on that part. And this is the fluid part. So for this simulation, because we have a rotating rotor here, that's why we need to separate the fluid part, the moving part, from the stationary part. So that means split this domain first. I uh, need to use this support pen and the cylinder split any components. That means use the correct direction here. So we need to split twice. First, uh, we need to split behind the rotor. Make sure it's in the correct location. Looks good. Give a name here. What's the part? Oh, sorry, I forgot to make a mistake. Oh, let me redo it. <laughs> Click the wrong button. Split here, okay. Yeah, give a name, so probably uh, wrong. And uh, right, okay. So we just split this part into two parts. And then we need to do another split. Let me choose the front part and choose the direction. Let's do another split here. Probably the in that part and the rotor part. Okay. Then we have three three separate parts. So the step we want to do this is because we want to handle the moving parts for this rotor. That's all I need to do the splitting and then I need to select these three components as the fluid domain. All right. Let me uh, select the physics first. Uh, in this case, we consider turbulence flow uh, streamline. And for the materials, because this is a water pump, let me choose water for the materials as a fluid pump. The working fluid is water here. And we need to create some boundary condition. So first, let me choose this part and add an inlet boundary condition for this part. And here, 
we need to select this surface as an outlet from the condition. And also, let me choose this part again and select all the surfaces on the outside to recreate this part for the post processing purpose. Then we do the similar thing for the rotor. Let me choose the outer surfaces and create a bonding condition. All right. So that's all we want to add for the bonding condition. Let me uh, just generate the mesh here. Uh, so let me use the smaller mesh size on this surface. We can generate the mesh for this part. So as it's uh, generating the mesh, I see a good question that just came in. Is there capability to run large jobs on multiple computers or submit jobs to a cluster? And the answer is yes. So we, uh, CreoFlow analysis comes with up to eight cores on workstation, on one workstation. Uh, for example, Lay is demoing on his laptop here, not even a workstation, but uh, the software comes with up to eight cores, and then you can add additional cores in increments of eight. Right now we are trying to change the mice. So this is the parameters for our measures in the normal mode, so we can change the cell size on the surface, minimum cell size, maximum cell size, or some parameters to control the, how to detect the critical angles, angles and the edge. So most of the time, users don't need to change it. We also have advanced mode. I will skip that one. So as you can see, we already got the mesh here. Let me take a look of the mesh. So this is a stator, surface mesh of the stator, and this is a rotor. And we can take a look of the mesh. It's pretty good on the surface. Okay, let me set up this case by face. For this part, uh, let me add a non-intrusion frame here to model the moving rotor. So here, as you can see, we need to define the rotational center and the, the direction of the axis, rotational axis. I think I keep using these two, uh, the default value for that two uh, parameters and uh, change, just change the rotational speed to 34. Okay, that's good. And for the boundary condition setting, here is our inlet. Let me use total pressure here. And use this value. And then pressure here for the inlet. And also let me release streamline from this surface. And for the outlet, let me use uh, volume metric flux and change the direction outflow. So let me use uh, nine cubic meter per second for the Outlet bonding condition. So that's all for the settings. Then we can run the simulation from here. Show the streamline. Let me keep drawing of the streamlines, and we can color it with uh, maybe pressure of the streamline. Make an animation of the streamline by setting up the animation time step. Pressure is not very good. Let me use velocity magnitude. It's better. And then we can plot up pressure on the inner surface. So I just chose the inner surface of the rotor and the stator. And let me choose pressure on this surface. As you can see, this is a simple case. 
of how to use fuel flow analysis to solve uh, um, moving components safety problem. So this is the uh, residual, as you can see, it converts pretty fast. So I think we still have like a couple minutes. So let me stop here. This is the first case, the uh, first uh, demo for this pump. We use non-issue frame for this moving component, and we run steady state simulation. So let me, the second uh, thing I want to show is the uh, moving lighting mesh approach to, to solve the, the pump case. So let me go back to this router part and turn off the non-insure frame settings and turn on the volume remesh. Then we will use a moving mesh for this router and a sliding mesh on the interface between the router and the stator to, show, to solve a, a change simulation. So here let me just set up the rotational speed here and we can, that's all for the uh, settings switching from the steady state to the change and simulation for moving approach. That's all we need to set up. And the only thing left we need to switch the steady state simulation to the change and simulation. Then we will just run one second of the simulation, probably with 1,000 steps here. And let me reuse the current steady state result and start from here to run a transient simulation. Oh, sorry. Yeah, for the change of I need to separate this surface to make, to allow the moving of this component. Let me separate and connect these two interfaces. Then we can run it from here. All right. So you will see this, this router is moving right now. And we are looking at the inner loop, inner, inner convergence of each time step. We just finished the first time step. You should see the moving of rotating of this rotor for every time step. It's moving right now. So this is a quick demo of the water pump with two different approaches. Thank you, Lei. So that uh, concludes our presentation and demo for today. Stuart, happy to take uh, more questions here in the last few minutes. And if we don't have any questions, I would just offer to the group, if you have uh, a problem, uh, fluids, heat, or the combination of those two, just contact Stuart or Bill, and we'd be happy to work with you to set up the model and show you the power and the value propositions from Creo Flow analysis. Yeah, at the moment, I don't see any questions. Um, again, if anyone has any, please go ahead and put them in the chat window. Um, while I'm waiting to see if any of those come through, I'll just show one thing quickly. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, as you just heard from Rich, please feel free to contact us. Uh, like Rich said, we'd be happy to help with a custom demo specific to your use case. If you've got a question about something that you are working on, that you're designing, you want to see what, it, what could be done, we can certainly discuss that. Uh, we can also help arrange a free 30-day trial. If you wanted to take a closer look, give it a try, you know, check under the proverbial hood. So please feel free to just contact me. Uh, hopefully you have my contact information. Here's my email address uh, that you can reach me at. And also wanted to let you know that our next webinar will be two weeks from today. Uh, we'll be talking about the implementation of the Smart Factory at EAP, the Elite Aviation Products. Uh, that will be June 26th at 10 a.m. You can sign up from our website. This address is here. You can also just browse from our website into the webinar section, and you'll see it there. It appears I was not sharing my screen at the time. I apologize. 
what I was trying to show you. Uh, please feel free to contact us. My email address is listed there, and you can find information on the webinar here. All right, well, I don't see any other questions coming in, so I want to thank Rich and Lay for, for your presentation. I think that was very informative, very, very good use of our time. So thank you very much. You're welcome, and thank you and to the attendees. Thank you all for your time. All right, thank you, everyone, and have a nice day.